What is going on, Nerd Paraders and fellow New Worlders? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for coming to hang here with us today as we play some New World and the closed beta as it sort of winds down. The closed beta is slated to close on August 2nd, 2021, and the full game is coming out on August 31st, 2021. So there's going to be a bit of a gap there uh, before we're able to play New World again. But this is one of the things that I wanted to do before the beta closed out, and we finally got to do it. That's right take over our own territory. We grabbed Restless Shore, and it is governed by Nerd Parade. I am Nick. This is Nerd Parade. Welcome here to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang. And we're going to talk a little bit about governing our territory and what you can do if your company has claim to a territory. Currently, the Nerd Parade crew was 100 strong in closed beta, and if we want to invite, e invite even one more person, we'd have to make a second one. But we plan on doing that when the game goes live. Having multiple companies, and anybody and everybody is welcome to join us if you wish to do. Just do like it says here on the message of the day. Hit us up at discord.gg slash nerdparade. Come game out in New World with us when the game goes live, and we can take over many territories together. Now in our treasury, it shows that we have 3k coins saved up. And we're going to go in here to Nerd Parade Town Hall, hang a right, and we're going to go over here to this governor's desk. This governor's desk allows us to do the more menial tasks of settlement owning, and that is change the tax rates and things when it comes to your settlement. Because you can earn a passive income by taxing the activities in your settlement. Now, my plan for settlement ownership is to leave things at the default because it is it defaults to the lowest possible value, which we're going to go in here now and check out change. So you can only edit this once every 24 hours. But if we go down to property tax, the minimum value is 5%. You cannot go any lower. Trading tax, same thing. Again, minimum value, 2.5%. You cannot go any lower. Maximum value is 25%. You can go in here. You could try to say, I want to do 0.5% and hit accept but it's going to default back to 2.5. And if I were to say yes, okay, it would just put it on cooldown for 24 hours and nothing would change. So it defaults you in closed beta to the absolute lowest possible. And we're going to leave it that way. The reason why we're going to leave it that way and not tax people heavily in this area is because we want to encourage people to come to our town and do things. And the more things people do, the lower you can have your tax rates and not really gouge people. Because I feel like high tax areas, people are going to avoid like the plague when it comes to the game's full release. Now, as I mentioned, you also kind of earn coins passively. We're currently in the green at 51.93 coins. Uh, it gets updated hourly, and this is kind of what our settlement is actively earning. You should make sure that you have enough to keep upkeep your territory. Our next payment, we can pay it in three hours as it counts down, and it's only 100 coins. This is the more bureaucratic stuff. But when it comes to actually upgrading your territory, you need to go to a different area and not the governor's desk, and that just happens to be down here. This is where you really manage the upgrades at the territory planning area. So if you look here, it says Territory Restless Shore, and I thought this was kind of a neat little touch. We've got our hamlet here that can be upgraded. We're passively doing it over the course of time here, and then our fort. Now what I'm going to do is show something neat, because I thought this was kind of like a cool little thing. It's just it's a small, small little thing, but I thought it was cool. The positioning is exactly the same as it is on the map. So on the map, on the territory board, and on the map in your in the game as you press M, like let's take Weavers, for example, it would be the fort would be kind of in the top left hand side of your screen where the settlement would be in the middle. We go back in here, the positions are the exact same as they would be on the map, which is just kind of like a neat little flavor thing. I thought I, I don't know. It was interesting to me. The first thing we're gonna check out is our Hamlet. And we're going to go through the areas of what you can upgrade once you're here and then kind of how to do it. We can upgrade, we can start the project to upgrade our kitchen to tier 3 for 100 coins. We can kick it off, it takes 24 hours once it's complete. Dun -da -da, victory! We can upgrade that and continue to go forward from there. The first thing that we chose to upgrade was the Arcane Repository for 100 coins. 49.2% complete and then we can invest in other things as we go. So if you've seen, we had the Arcane Repository at 49%. And I honestly thought that we'd be able to upgrade a couple of things at once, but that is not the case. So I came over here and tried to upgrade the smelter, considering this is like one side and this is the other side. Like, oh, we might be able to upgrade two things at once. 
It does not appear to be the case. You cannot upgrade two things at once, so I'm out kind of 100 coin. And the 49.2% that we had on the Arcane Repository, please don't tell my company members. They might be mad at me because that's, what, 12 hours worth of waiting? But this was all for science. We were kind of playing around with it. So as this is going at zero, let's go over here and try to do the Forge Tier 2. We're going to click on this. Uh, are we sure? Yes. Uh, maybe if I would have actually read that warning message, it would have told me, hey, you're about to stop upgrade process, but nobody reads instructions anymore. They just click and then face the consequences. We're going to pay with this from the company wallet again for the sake of the sake of the video. 100 coins down the toilet. Clicky. Town project has started. Yippee has canceled the smelter and has now activated Forge Tier 2 instead. So you can only upgrade one thing at a time. Upgrading your your settlement, your hamlet, to a capital city is going to take a lot of coin and a long, long time. Which is also going to, con to encourage you to hold on to this territory and not have it taken over by your enemies so that you can still reap the maximum benefits. However, from what it seems in closed beta, if a territory is taken over by the enemy, the upgrades don't crumble back down to the lowest possible tier. The enemy just kind of inherits the pre-existing completed upgrades and then can continue to go and build from there, from what I've seen. I don't know if this is going to stick around for live. I hope that it does, because that would be very, very cool. Because uh, if you're used to kind of like being able to craft stuff at high tier, say you're level 60, and all of a sudden this max tier forge that you've been using at this city, whether it be a city that your company owns or your faction owns or not, you've been able to craft all your materials there. If that were to suddenly go away, I feel like it would be relatively detrimental to the game and your advancement in your gameplay as any type of player. So I can't imagine that would necessarily go away, but it's beta. Things could things could be different on live. We don't 100% know yet. So now that we've covered the, kind of the Hamlet upgrades, we're gonna go over here to the Fort upgrades and not click anything that we're not supposed to because we don't wanna overwrite anything like that. So the first thing that we're upgrading at the Fort are the gates. Now when it comes to PvP combat and it comes to like territory claiming and war, in war, you have to claim A, B, and C flag points in order to be able to start breaking down walls for a fort. If you can delay your enemy for 30 minutes and survive that, you have successfully defended your fort. Some things that will help you do that are upgrading the overall health on the gates, making them harder for your enemies to break down once they control the A, B, and C flag points on the exterior of your fort. Other things that will help you upgrade, things like the ballista, the cannons or explosives, the war horn, which I was really excited to kind of play with. We blow the nerd horn, but I don't know if it gives you any kind of buff or not. It would be kind of neat if it does, maybe like a rally or something, a temporary increase to health. I have no idea what it does, but it would be cool to kind of like expect something neat like that. The burning oil vats that kind of like you can dump down and use and burn your enemies as they're trying to break into the gates. And then the repeaters, which are relatively strong, but you're a sitting duck when you're on top of there. If you happen to see a previous Nerd Parade video when we were doing some fort defense, I got on a repeater for a hot three seconds before I got domed off of it. So you can upgrade these things individually to make them each stronger. And then you can upgrade the uh, emplacement points, which is a bit confusing to me. Now, the emplacement points say that it unlocks an additional point to deploy an emplacement. Now, even at a level, a tier one fort, in the defense, we were noticing that most of these things already existed on the fort. So when it says extra points to deploy an emplacement, I think, but I'm not 100% certain, I think that it might refer to the deployables that you can purchase and place anywhere on the battlefield because those do have a restricted number. You can only place a certain amount of cannons or repeaters that anybody can kind of mount wherever on the battlefield before it locks you and says, no, you've reached the maximum limit. I believe that maybe upgrading the hard point to tier two allows you to do more of the placements, but I haven't firsthand experienced it, so it's kind of speculation on my point uh, Currently, I feel this light will be a very slow and steady process in the beginning of the game. People are going to really kind of slog through and upgrade each of the points, and it's going to take quite a long time. Now, eventually, as the game matures, 
all these points are going to be upgraded and everything will be kind of be at its max but the fort instead of the the cities i feel like should kind of degrade and that way it make if someone takes it over the fort resets kind of back to zero i believe that's currently how it functions i am not 100 percent sure because we have taken this territory uh, we were the first ones to grab it we didn't take it in a war but i believe that the fort goes back to zero or tier one whenever it's conquered so the enemy actually has to build it back up if it doesn't i feel like it could make end tier game a bit stale because everybody's constantly taking over max tier things whereas the city should remain kind of like max tier what you've upgraded so it doesn't affect all of the players in the game the fort and its strength really only affects the people trying to take over or defend the pvpers if you will so with that being said I believe the fort does downgrade all the way to zero. Again, I'm not 100% sure because I haven't experienced it firsthand. But in my opinion, I think that it should if it doesn't. That way, late game doesn't feel stale. And there's still some kind of like encouraged upgrade system instead of always constantly taking over max level stuff. And then there's no really nowhere else really to go with it. And then lastly, but not leastly, we can click here and improve our activity and our lifestyle. And this... This is really neat. These are like temporary buffs. So you can activate these buffs for a fistful of coins and then everybody in the region gets more, 20% more logs by harvesting trees in your region for three days. I believe that you can get multiple buffs from the same, uh, from one, at least one from each category from what I've been told. But again, I haven't had the opportunity to confirm this exactly for ourselves. But it would be neat if you just had the coin and could activate all these things and everybody in your territory gets a huge three-day buff and they're like, hey, let's go use nerd territory because their buffs are awesome and we get 20% more for everything that we do. I think that's super cool. And I really like the idea of investing some of your settlement's coin or something you're earning from the taxes back into the community to really encourage people to participate in your zone. All this stuff seems really, really interesting to me and something that New World does very well in my opinion is really encourage kind of like a community system within the game, almost unlike I've anything I've seen before prior in MMO style games like this. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting, it's pretty cool and pretty unique. I look forward to seeing a lot more of it personally. I don't know if we're gonna have the opportunity to test all this stuff out in closed beta because we're kind of winding down and again we only have a couple of days left so that means we'll be able to upgrade maybe two or three things before the closed beta ends but once the game goes fully live i do plan to test all this stuff and uh hope that it remains the same and all of our current knowledge doesn't go the way of the dinosaurs and vanish into a completely new world system but time will tell for now this is going to do it for our interesting little settlement conquering takeover video and all the things that you can do within the settlement some of it is a bit speculatory because i don't necessarily know how it all works and we don't have the time to test it but these are my hopes of how that it works and i would like to hear what you guys think as well in the comments below if you like this video and you learned anything about taking over settlements and what you can do once you own it please tag the thumbs up button for us let us know that you like the stuff that way and come back and hang with us for some more new world content coming your way in the future but until then, guys, this is where I leave you. Remember to take care of yourselves out there, stay awesome, and we'll see you again real soon.